more than six weeks after the killing of uh, journalist uh, Shireen Abu Akle and injury of her colleague uh, Ali Samundi in uh, Janine in, uh, on the 11th of May 2022. It's uh, deeply disturbing that Isra Israeli authorities have not conducted a criminal investigation. That's according to the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, spokesperson uh, Ravina uh, Shamdisani. Now, after the OHCR's own probe into the incident, Ms. Shamdasani says that this uh, monitoring from our office is consistent with many findings out there that the shots that killed her came from the Israeli security forces. Israeli authorities, though, insist that it was not yet possible to conclude who was responsible uh, in the view of uh, Palestinian authorities' refusal to conduct a joint investigation and hand over the bullet. Well, to talk to us a little bit more about this, I'm now joined by the head of legal strategies for Palestinian Media Watch, Lieutenant Colonel Maurice Hirsch. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Good evening to you and to, and to the viewers. All right. So um, the UN uh, said that they're, ha they're not happy that uh, Israeli authorities have not conducted a criminal investigation over the shooting of uh, the Palestinian journalist uh, Abu Akli. Well, uh, uh, I cannot say that I am surprised. We're talking about the UN Human Rights Council. This is a, a UN organization that has 10 specific agenda items on every meeting that they have. One entire item is devoted to one country alone, to Israel. In every single session, Israel is condemned. As if there were no crimes going on anywhere around the world, no abuses of human rights going on anywhere else around the world, except in Israel, except Israel ostensibly victimizing the Palestinians, um, that is something which is a regular occurrence. And so to hear the UN saying that they are disappointed that no uh, uh, criminal investigation has been undertaken is something which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. This has been something which is systematic, endemic of the UN Human Rights Council. This is why the entire body is illegitimate and biased and should never be listened to. All right, so where are we now at this stage? Has an investigation been done by the Israeli authorities uh, looking at this killing? Well, so, so, so the first question that I have to ask maybe back to you and to, and to, and, and, and to everyone listening is, well, why is Israel even being asked to conduct a criminal investigation? There have been, in the last 30, some 2,700 journalists killed in the course of uh, um, in the course of, of, of giving coverage to war situations, why is Israel being specifically singled out and required to carry out in, a, a criminal investigation? What basis is there for carrying out this criminal investigation? What basis is that, that requirement? In what system does that actually work? What standard is being applied? And why is a separate standard being applied to Israel? The general standard that is required for a criminal investigation is a suspicion of committing a crime. Who, which exactly Israeli soldier is suspected of committing a crime? We're not talking about Israel on trial here. Israel isn't on trial. A criminal trial is against one specific individual without forensic evidence, which is being intentionally withheld by the Palestinian Authority. Why would there be any requirement of Israel to conduct a proper uh, um, criminal investigation? Why is that not that demand? not sent and given to the Palestinian Authority, turn over the bullet. We know why they wouldn't turn over the bullet, because they know that if they'd handed over the bullet, forensic evidence would be able to prove that the gun from which the bullet was shot was a Palestinian terrorist gun. We have hundreds of bullets on which we've done forensic testing over the years, guns which have been handed over to the Palestinian Authority, guns which are in the possession of terrorists. They know, obviously and clearly, that the gun from which the bullet that killed Shireen was fired is a gun which can be identified, and therefore they are doing everything to withhold held, ha handing over that bullet. This demand, instead of demanding Israel open an empty and useless criminal investigation, 
The demand should be to the Palestinian Authority, conduct a proper joint investigation, hand over the bullet for forensic testing, and so that the truth can come to light. If it's an Israeli soldier, then Israel will have to deal with that. But in the meantime, the only evidence that we have is that the Palestinian Authority is intentionally withholding evidence from the investigation, and they must know why, and they clearly have their reasons for doing so. Lieutenant Colonel Hirsch, they're saying that Israeli authorities cannot investigate themselves, that uh, the Israeli army is a suspect in this issue, and therefore it's quite likely that you might cover up and protect your own. They even say that you've done this in the past, and they would prefer that this investigation be done by an independent third party. Would you be willing to allow that bullet to be uh, forensically tested by a third party, not yourselves? Well, so, so the answer to that is very clear. We are not in control of the bullet. We do not have the bullet and we cannot dictate to whom the Palestinian Authority hands that bullet over. If they would like to hand it over to the Americans, to an independent source, and then a proper forensic test can be done, I'm sure Israel would have no objection because at the moment we don't have the bullet, we don't have control of the bullet, and there's no way we can force the Palestinians to hand over that bullet to anyone else. What I am sure you will find if you ask the Palestinian Authority is let's put aside the platitudes of, well, Israel can't investigate itself. Israel can investigate itself. It does investigate itself. When soldiers are found to have committed offenses, then they are prosecuted. But if the Palestinian Authority intentionally withholds the evidence, then the demand to them should be hand over the evidence. Nothing short of that should be accepted. And any prior demand to Israel to conduct an investigation, and in, 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 and a criminal investigation is absolutely mm. ridiculous and is based and founded only on intentional bias against Israel. Israel has already been convicted for a crime which it probably didn't commit. And, and at the same time, the Palestinians are withholding the evidence. It's like the old adage says, the lie travels halfway around the world before the truth can even put its, its, its shoes on. The Palestinians have been lying from the moment Shireen Abu Akleh was killed. According to the Palestinians, there were no terrorists in the, in the vicinity of Shireen Abu Akleh. There were no, Isra no one was firing weapons apart from Israeli soldiers. Do we actually believe any of this is true? Do we actually believe that the Palestinians who had been their warriors in the Janine camp, uh, refugee camp, as the brave warriors who have been chasing out the Zionists, do we believe that that's true? When we see footage of Palestinians indiscriminately shooting and then claiming that they've hit an Israeli soldier, when no Israeli soldier was shot, do we actually believe the report that... Uh, Lieutenant, well, Colonel no Hirsch, Lieutenant Colonel yeah. Hirsch, so one of the challenges that the Palestinians have, and uh, this is uh, a report by an Israeli human rights group, Yesh Din, uh, which studied military data from 2019 to 2020, and it found that Israel prosecuted only 2% of the cases where Palestinians were reported harmed by soldiers. It found that soldiers killed more than 150 Palestinians during that time, but only 16 cases were investigated. Why is the number so low? Well, so it happens that I've actually uh, previously done an in-depth study of the, statist of the ostensible statistics put out by Yesh Din. These are systematic statistics given in order to provide a warped sense of reality. Within the numbers of Palestinians killed are terrorists who came, who came and were in the course of carrying out terror attacks. They were shot and killed in self-defense as they would be in any other country. Imagine a homicidal uh, uh, terrorist coming with a knife and trying to attack people indiscriminately on the streets. That's what happened. Terrorists get shot. That is self-defense. The problem with Yeshtin is that they infer the idea similar to this case that well, there's a person who's been killed, so it must have been the Israelis who killed the Palestinian. 
They never come to the conclusion that there's internal Palestinian fighting. They never come to the conclusion that Palestinians were actively involved in terror attacks when they were shot in self-defense. They never come to the conclusion that if they compare the statistics to prosecution statistics in other countries, specifically for hate crimes, they will find that actually Israel's level of prosecution in these types of instances is much higher than most of the European standard. That statistics, which you can find on the website of NGO Monitor, it's a study that we've done previously and completely debunking both the methodology and the statistics published by Yeshtin. Yeshtin, you have to understand, is an organization funded predominantly by money that is anti-Israel and their reports are biased from the start and funded by the organizations who are putting out the same libels against it. There is a, a, a case also that um, when you do prosecute and uh, one of your soldiers perhaps is found guilty, that quite often the sentences are quite light. For example, 2016, a soldier was caught on tape executing a Palestinian after the Palestinian had been wounded and no longer posed a threat. The soldier was sentenced to only 18 months in prison and served only nine. That really has to be lenient uh, for, for murder. Well, I, I, unfortunately, in this case, I have to agree with you. I, too, believe that the sentence that was handed down to Elora, Elora Azaria was exceptionally lenient. I think it should have been much more stringent. But we also have to take into account that your description of the events was somewhat inaccurate. The person Elora Azaria shot was a terrorist who had just carried out or tried to carry out a terrorist attack against the, the Israeli soldiers. Elora Azaria claimed in his defense, and it was something which was hard uh, uh, to refute, that he believed that the terrorist still had some type of suicide belt on him and that his movements were suspicious and that he feared for the lives of those around him. That was a a potentially reasonable suspicion. It's something which has happened on previous occasions. It's something that soldiers are regularly told to, to, to take those precautions when they see terrorists coming up, not to get too close, even after they have been neutralized for the fear that their bodies and they themselves are booby-trapped. This is something which yeah. is a reality in Israel. All right. This is have something you that... Have you, have you do on a regular basis right. have and you, therefore have you that shared, fear could have been potentially yeah. very warranted all right have you shared all the information that you have about this investigation have you spoken to all the soldiers that were in the vicinity that perhaps could shed some light on what might have happened and are you still so, in the belief that it could have been a palestinian uh, 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 gun that shot uh, uh, the journalist. So, so I have to uh, have to make sure that that it's understood that I am a, a reserve officer. I am not in active duty, and I am not speaking in an official position uh, uh, on behalf of the IDF, as you mentioned as in the introduction. I am the head of legal strategies for an organi organization called Palestinian Media Watch. But I'll answer the question clearly after the event. A, a form of command investigation was carried out. The IDF even put out a statement saying that we have come to some types of conclusions and we are still working on understanding the full picture, but the full picture can only be understood once we have the bullet. Having said that, I do not believe that there is any basis. I was head of a prosecution, of a district prosecution for many years, um, I do not believe in my professional capacity that there is any basis whatsoever to open a criminal investigation against Israeli soldiers. And yes, to answer your question, I spent 20 years in the IDF. I know exactly what the instructions to the Israeli soldiers are when they go out into these even operational circumstances. There are clear instructions to target combatants, not civilians. And that is what the Israeli soldiers do. I can probably 
quite categorically say that there was no Israeli soldier involved in the killing of Shirin Abu Akleh, and therefore the conclusion must be that she was killed by Palestinian terrorists. The Palestinian Authority knows that she was killed by a Palestinian terrorist, which, as I said previously, is the reason why they are withholding the bullet and not allowing any type of forensic uh, analysis to be done. This must be understood clearly. All right. And that's where we're going to have to leave it. Thank you so much indeed for joining us and uh, sharing us with us Thank your you thoughts and insights. Thanks for your time.